We thank God for the opportunity uh, to hear his word even this morning by the grace and the mercies of God. Because of those that are new, my name is Jonathan uh, Cabero, and I have the joy of salvation this wonderful uh, morning. Indeed, the Lord has been so gracious and kind to me, and I desire more and more of him. Uh, my wife, Faith, is here. She can stand and wave. Thank you. All right. Si usalimia mwenzake, mpatia high ten and a good smile. Eh, yeah. kumangaria hivyo, a good smile. Good. Eh. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we thank God for this far that we have gone. Uh, January is over. Sindio? Ilikuwa na siku ngapi kurigana na wewe? Huh? 58. <laughs> uh, it is my prayer that God will continue to carry us through uh, every month of this new year, 2024. The grace of God is indeed going to be so sufficient uh, upon us. We read from 1 Samuel chapter 1, 20, and also Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, uh, through to verse 10. I desire that I concentrate with Galatians chapter 6, but also reflect on 1 Samuel, but along the way we will go in depth in the course of the year uh, concerning Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through to verse uh, 10, and especially uh, verse 9. Allow me to say that uh, in terms of the background of Galatians chapter 6, and indeed the entire uh, epistle to the church, uh, it is, is a summary we fight in Galatians chapter 6, the Lord was lighting uh, to this church. And uh, in the chapter, Paul felt the need to keep doing good and to carry on good work. He talks about uh, carrying one another's burdens commonly referred to as the law uh, of Christ of bearing burdens and sowing seeds and planting seeds uh, waiting for harvest uh, thereafter. By being compassionate uh, in times of restoration and when those who have sinned and gone uh, out of their way of the Lord, how we need to be compassionate and actually to reach out to them. And that is why in verse 1 he says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who uh, live by the Spirit should restore uh, that person. It is a call for those who are standing to think about those hmm? and actually to take that burden upon themselves. He also talks about the mutual love, the unconditional love to everyone, whether a Jew, whether uh, a non-Jew, and therefore for us to think about how we need to care for one another and how we need to extend unconditional love even to those who could be at the level where we may say they are unlovable. He talks about generosity and life focused on the cross or the Christian duty for that matter. It is good for us to remember that in our lives we have the Christian duty. As members of St. Gertrude, it is good to remember we have the Christian duty and our duty as members of this church. And therefore in the entire book of Galatians, the following themes come to us. Number one is a Christian responsibility. You, as a Christian, you have responsibility at different levels. And the first level is at the family level. We also talk of the church level. 
We also talk of the society. We have responsibilities in those uh, three areas. It is good for us to be reminded that we were created for two things in this world, to serve God and humanity. Please remind your neighbor, you are created to serve God and humanity. And therefore, in whatever, wherever we are, we have to ask ourselves, are we serving God? Are we serving the, the humanity? Every moment you wake up in the morning to go to your place of work, you are there for God. You are also there for the humanity. And it is not possible for me and you to serve humanity and we fail to, go, uh, to serve God. Or to serve God and you fail to serve humanity. If that happens, then we are not holistic uh, for that matter. He goes on to remind us about uh, another great thing, and that is about leaping and showing, planting the seeds, and ensuring that we are part and parcel of doing the great uh, planting, that we be there in season, and we plant knowing very well we are going to leap one day. As we sow, there is something that will come thereafter. He talks about pride and humility. He talks about the centrality of the cross. And this is where he says, nothing else but the cross. And it is good for us as Christians to remember that it is not about anything else. It is about the cross. We need to go to the cross. We need to show people the way of the cross. And we also need to be under that cross all the way through as we move on. Our theme uh, for the year 2024 is don't become weary, the harvest is coming. And today's topic, we reflect on persistence in doing good. How we need to be persistent, how we need to carry on doing good wherever we are. And to be a persistence is, to con is continuing on a good course. That good cause that you are thinking about, that you continue with the same. It is continuing in the good action, in spite of difficulties that you may come across, in spite of the difficulties you have gone through, in spite of opposition, because in our course of our lives, we fight and we meet opposition. It is continuing to do good, to carry on on the right course, even in times of delayed results. We may find ourselves we are looking for this result. We have missed our targets, and therefore we are being called to continue being persistent, to carry on doing good, and to move on in the right direction. And which are some of these areas that Paul is reminding us not to become weary because a harvest is coming. It is carrying the Lord. Kubeba mzigo. It may be the Lord at your family level. The Lord that concerns probably your marriage. The Lord that concerns about your children, your sibling. The Lord that may concern even your parents, the people who are close to you. He talks about bearing with one another's burden. Even in our places of work, it is a good cause for us to bear with one another. As a nation at this particular time, in this nation, we must bear with one another. We must accommodate one another's uh, shortcomings or challenges here and there. The Lord is calling us that we must not become weary. A harvest is, is coming. Let us think about the facts that sometimes bring this feeling of becoming uh, weary. The causes that as Christians of the day, we actually find ourselves feeling like we are becoming weary or we are giving up for that matter. Number one, it is delay in bearing fruits or the results. I do not know what you are trusting God for last year, 2023. I do not know for how long you have trusted God in this and that other thing. And as we lead in the first, uh, uh, first leading, 
how Ericana and Hannah, how they kept on for a long time. They were not blessed with a child. And that was kept day after day, years after years. They had no uh, fruits of their womb uh, for Hannah, for that matter. It was burden, and it was becoming a burden day after the other. It was possible for Hannah to have given up. It was possible for her to say, it is over. I do not need even to think about a son or a daughter for that matter. Sometimes we become weary because of the lack of light at the end of the tunnel. That even as you look this direction, you are not seeing any light. There is nothing that is forthcoming. You are not seeing any indication of hope towards the end. You feel you are actually losing it. Sometimes we get weary because of discouragement. Because we feel we are discouraged. There could be some people who are around us who can also be actually source of our discouragement. That you are doing this great thing. You are committed yourself to a certain cause, but you are discouraged in one way or another. People may be come around you who are very negative, but there isn't anything that is actually coming to you. The other day, I was in traffic and there was a, a graduation in one of our universities. Na kurikuwa na wanafunzi or graduates who had their gowns. And uh, a tout from a matato shouted, Musome tu, lakini hakuna kazi. What do you think those students, those graduates felt? They must have felt discouraged. Yes, such things happen. Musome tu, lakini hakuna kazi. Na saa hiyo diyo umejikaza, diyo umefanya yako yote, lakini unasikia hata ukisoma, hakuna kazi. There is one boy who is a, an artist, anacheza hii michezo a, dogo dogo ya TikTok na Facebook. Na yeye, akapatikana sasa na mwingine ya graduate. Yeye anauza smoke, akaenda, huyu akaenda kununua. Kamuliza, oh, umegraduate reo, eh, ata mimi nilira graduate two years ago. Lakini mimi nauza nini? Yes, how do you think that would come? It is a great discouragement. Fanya kazi and all those kind of a thing. And those things come to us. Recently we were being told, uh, uh, kazi kwa vijana, pesa wapi? Eh, kwa hivyo vinyini vijana, afanyeni nini? Lakini pesa inaenda kwa? So we may feel discouraged by such a uh, sentiment. You may have worked at your place of work, dedicated and committed yourself in your place of work. In fact, you go maybe two hours earlier than the reporting time. You are the last person to leave that place of work. There is still no promotion. Your boss has never uh, noted how committed you are. You are feeling discouraged, becoming weary. In this nation of ours, as we continue to struggle with corruption and the like, the much we find ourselves feeling discouraged as our businesses corrupt here and there. We are just from COVID-19. You may have felt discouraged that tomorrow there can be another thing that will bring my work, my business uh, down. Sometimes we get to that level where we just feel nothing big, nothing so big. Watch a two new and all those kind of a thing. Kuna watu nasikianga wakisema bora. Bora nin. Yes, bora uhai. We are slowly giving ourselves into such a fate, into such situation. Negativities all around us in so big ways. You may have looked that an opportunity will come for you to have a husband, to have a wife. But they say maybe there are no Wife, what? Oh, kube munajua hizi story. But where there is no wife material, there must be also no husband material. Eh, hey, and all those kind of a thing. But for this church, God will give you wives and he will give you? Yes. Hi, singles. There is no single lady in this church. Or oh, single man. Nitawaita hapa siku moja, diyo to have a service of the singles, sindio? 
and you never know out of that. Eh, hey, dio vijana wafungue nini? Eh, hey, na wewe mstana macho ikifunguliwa unakubali nini? Kuonekana. The difficult situations in our lives we surrender ourselves to fate and we accept defeat sometimes and we feel it is okay. I don't have to be there. You may have failed to meet your target and your result even in your place of work. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 5, we read about the, uh, the disciples of Jesus. They went out fishing and for a whole night they caught nothing. In the morning they were frustrated. Things were difficult for them. And Jesus came to them. At that particular time they didn't know it was him. And he says, we have worked hard. Not just working. But working hard. Because you can work, but you are not working hard. So these men had worked hard. Not just for a few hours, but a whole night. And they say, we haven't caught anything. That is a situation. That is where uh, they found themselves. I don't know whether you can say, I have worked hard the whole month. I have worked hard the whole year, 2023. But I caught nothing. I have nothing to show. The Lord is reminding us, we must not become weary. A harvest will come at the right time uh, for that matter. Now, let us look at these areas that we talked about. Number one is about the family Lord. The burdens that we carry uh, as far as our families are actually concerned. The good cause for you as a husband, as a wife, as a son or a daughter for that matter. As we think about our children, we may think of the situations that we feel we are becoming weary here and there. As we see and ask ourselves, is my son, my daughter, the way he is today, the way I imagined he is going to be? Sometimes it doesn't uh, look the way we had imagined. You are looking at your children and wondering, are uh, these my children? Is this my son who I actually trusted that at this particular time, he is going to be in this level or that other level. Some of them have failed even in their education. Some have actually abandoned school. And as a father, as a mother, you are feeling so bad and discouraged within yourself. I'm reminded one time there was graduation at KU. And that is my way home uh, around 2017. And I met a family of uh, uh, husband and wife that were actually crying in uh, the National Oil uh, just next to KU. They were devastated. And so I decided to inquire then what is the situation? Now this family had come all the way from Eldoret for the graduation of their son. Unfortunately, their son was not in the graduation list. Na wamekuja, wamekodesha gari, na wameweka dizi pare katikati. Suna kubuko wakati huo. Dizi inaweka wapi. Di watoke wapi. Eo Doret to come for the graduation of their son. On inquiring, the Iran to their son has not stepped into the class, into the university. For how many years? He dropped in second year. Na wana fikia mesoma mefanya nini? And therefore, because there is graduation, they have come with everybody from the village coming for the graduation. You can imagine how this family, and especially this mother and this father, felt. So it is painful. Yes. And therefore, they pronounced all kind of words and bad words to this, uh, their son, who was just next there. But they encouraged them and told them, uh, we, we have a God of second chance. This man said, I cannot pay any more fee whatsoever for this son. I am done with him. But I thank God because we made contact thereafter and this son was able to go back to the university. And today, he is a senior person in the county government of Nakuru. <laughs> Suppose these men at that particular time became weary. Suppose he meant those words that he said without changing 
he is mild. This is a man who decided not to become weary. Though the son had gone uh, uh, out of his way, he had actually done the very bad thing. We think about our children. We trust in God that they could be working. But there are those, even if work is there, it is available. They are not able to join in. They don't value work. They are not developing. They are not moving in the right direction. I hear parents asking, watoto wao, utahama? Ah, no, I love you people. Unaenda, munashika hizi mambo. Utahama? Lini. Because he is supposed to move to the next level. But that is not happening. We feel discouraged. We feel becoming weary as a father, as a mother. They are feeling they do not want responsibilities. Some of them. When Gine ye yakai too heavy, he doesn't want into the responsibility of becoming a husband or becoming a wife. Ye ye afanya too kazi, hataki stress. Anataka too kukaa namna, namna hiyo. Ye ye alizariwa, lakini ye afataki kufanya nini? Eh, hey, diyo shep isifanya nini? Isiharibike. Kwa hivyo ye ataki, mamba yake iwe nini? Anataka kulite in figure hot. Yeah, figure eight. So, he says, no responsibility. And you as a father, you are wondering as a mother. The way you carried that daughter and that son. And he is not willing. And I have heard some of them who says, marriage nowadays is stress. Me, Mr. Kinini, I just get a small house, an apartment somewhere. As a man, I will live there. Nani nue Subaru. Story agu imefanya ni? Yeah, that is all. May God help us that even as parents will not give up, we will not become weary thinking about them. They are those who have gone into conflict within themselves and all that. They are those who have gone into drugs and substance abuse and alcoholism. And as a father, you are wondering what do you do. As a mother, you are becoming weary in a big way. The Lord is reminding us we must not become weary. That persistently we continue uh, to pray for them and to walk together with them. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1 through to verse 4. It is a story of mother to Limuel. And how he talked to his son. The son who may have appeared to have been a bad son for that matter. A bad son. He decided to speak and to continue speaking all the way through. And continued in the same to give counsel uh, to his own uh, son, Rimuel. And he says to him how he must not give into alcoholism. How alcoholism ruined kings. He was just moving and trying to help the son. May God help you. If you, you are the mother, the modern mother of Rimuel, may God help you that you not give in. You continue to pray and to do what you need to do. The other point as far, far as um, family is concerned, it concerns our marriage. That you are in that marriage that you have worked for and you have tried your ever best. Probably you have tried your ever best even to salvage, divorce. You have kept the marriage vows yourself. But probably your spouse has not been faithful. And faithfulness has come over you. You feel you are weary. You want to give up. Probably there have been violence even into, this mar into that marriage. Maybe there is what they call kneel by mouth syndrome in your marriage. Bwana Yesu sifiwe. Wenye haogreshani na mabibi zao na mabwana zao. Can I see you by show of hand? But we find ourselves into that situation that there is no even that talk or that laughter into that marriage. You are feeling as a wife, you are going to give up. You are feeling as a husband, you are going to give up. You may have struggled with that sick spouse for a long time. Pufate may have come into the family where you expected to be in as far as family projects are concerned, you may not have uh, achieved the same. Probably the family resources have been misused and as we see from 1 Samuel, the story of Elkanah and Hannah, probably there is no uh, child. 
and we see what Hannah went through. The Bible talks of year after year. How they mourned and how they were stressed for many times. Year after. How many years are those? Year after year. Yes, it is many years. That is what they went through. The Bible talks of Hannah and how Hannah describes her situation even before the priest. And she talks about how she is. In verse 3, he talks about year after year, this man went up from his town to worship year after year. In verse, in verse 10, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Those are the words that describe the situation of Hannah. In verse 11, towards the end, he says, Lord God, if you only look on your servant, misery. Those are the words that Hannah is describing. In verse 12, he says, as she kept on praying uh, to the Lord, she kept on going forward. In verse 13, Eddie thought she was drunk, that even the effort that actually Hannah was making to Eddie, she was what? Drunk. You can imagine that you have devoted yourself, but actually people around you think you are actually drunk. You are actually mad for that matter. Now so my Lord, in verse 15, if you are pleased before you, who is deeply troubled, she talks about pouring her heart. Towards the end of verse 16, she says, I hear out of my great anguish and grief. That is a condition that Hannah is describing her situation of life at that particular time. I do not know how and which words you can use concerning your marriage life, concerning the family where you are. You could be in that very bad situation uh, here and there. Probably drunkenness, irresponsibility has caught up with you. We are reminded to keep bearing the burden of prayer. Banais was a favor. Remind your neighbor, burden of prayer. Because prayer changes things, and it is able to change. Continue in prayer. There was this man who was married to this man. Uh, there was this woman who was married to this man. And this man was not a good husband. If you are seated to next to a lady, she can describe to you a bad, a bad husband. Mr. Kangata, I could describe what the word that she can give a uh, bad husband is all about. This man was violent. This man was drunkard. This man was all things. And this man had gone further even to tell this lady, I don't want those prayers in my house. Nasiku moja, fellowship moja ikaenda huko, huyu dada amewaita waenda wakaobe. Na wakafanya nini? Wakafukuzwa, wakiwa hapo, saida wameshikana mikono. Mikono ikafanya nini? Ikatoanishwa. Kwa deni kabisa mkaombe na na huko. Na ile chai ilikuwa imewekwa hapo. Na ile tumadazi tudogo. Sijui kwa nini hiyo tumadazi na kuanga kwa fellowship. Si mtu tu apike madazi kubwa mtu. Sasa hii tumadazi lazima ukure ngapi dio shibe. <laughs> oh, kwa hivyo hata fellowship na kuanga tu hivi hata hapa eh. When you want to cookery and bakery, tafadhali mufunzwe kupika madazi, madazi kubwa. Si wako kadogo lazima ukure kumi, dio, dio ushimbe. <laughs> and so, this man was that violent to a point of denying the wife even the freedom of worship. He could not talk to this man for many years. The man could hear nothing. This man was just a log in the house. Log. Unajua ile kimuti kimekatwa kiko tu namna hiyo. Hata ukiogeresha hiyo log, hakuna nini? If you are sitting next to a man, tell him don't be a log. Eh, hey, don't be a log. Sasa huyu hakuna kuongeresha. Anakaa tu hivyo hata ukiongea hakuna kitu amefanya nini? Amesikia. It used to be that bad. And this lady continued with prayers. And of course, Mimi Sipeanangi Zire Hadidi Zakinanan. 
Abunuasi. This is a true story. She continued. Na akashidwa sasa, how do I do? Now, kuna hawa watoto wa CBC. I don't know whether it is grade 5 or grade 4. One of their practicals is to make a scarecrow. Umeijua hiyo? So this man saw the son ametengeneza scarecrow. Akasema, wakati hiyo mtoto alienda shure, I'm going to make this to be my husband so that I can talk to, to him. Na ni muambia zile vitu nigetaka kufanya nini? Because if I talk to my husband, he will beat me. He will be violent. Kwa hivyo akaenda kwa wardrobe, akafarisha hii scarecrow, nguo za nani? Na akamfarisha mpaka kofia. Wazewe wenye wanafaa kofia, akafarisha vizuri. And he started talking to, the scroll, uh, to this uh, scarecrow. Holding this scarecrow. Speaking and saying how bad you have been. And all those kind of a thing. I have not hugged you for two years. And I don't know hugging in the scarecrow. Unfortunately, that day the husband came home early. Kwa hivyo akakuta nini? Zimefarishu wa guoza? My friend. But the husband watched Akaskia and Akaskia the prayers of this woman. And this man realized, I have been a very bad husband. If that is me who is being talked to, then I have been a very... And do you know what? That man transformed. And today, he is a great man, even in the church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe, and he is born again. This woman did not give up. She did not become weary concerning her marriage. She kept on all the way through. May God help you. I do not know the condition and what you can describe, but may God help you not to become weary. Number two, we think about our nation, our daily work, wherever we are, whatever we are doing. Last year and this year, we have seen heavy taxation coming along the way. A friend of mine, Leverett Parapala, says there will be taxes for the short people also. Kama we ni mufupi, unafanyo wa nini? Kama we ni murefu? Kama we ni munono? Kangata hauna baki. Kama we ni mudhin? Yes, and all that. But even at that, even as a nation, we must continue and carry on. May God help us in a big way as we lead from Amos chapter 9, verse 13 to verse 15, the restoration of the nation. That indeed God is going to restore our nation. That yes, we will not continue to sing the song of unemployment. That we will not continue to see corruption and wastage even in government, wherever, whatever is happening. It is difficult economic times, probably to, to show here and there. May God help us and come through for us in a big way. Number three, it is our church responsibility wherever we are. As Christians of the day, we are reminded that we have responsibility as it was during that time. And the Christians in this church were becoming weary. The Christians were feeling like Christ has delayed in coming back because Jesus said he is coming. He is coming. Not only back, but back and very soon. We are still here waiting. The disciples did not understand what that meant. They thought maybe it is going to be two weeks or one day. That is where we see Akina Ananias and Safira in that situation they found themselves in. Because the apostles got to a level of even selling their properties. Because after Lord, Jesus is coming soon. And that was their thought. That is where the Christianity of the day was. Christians had given all their belongings so that there is no need among them. False teachings were coming over at that particular time that was actually distorting the Christianity and the teaching they knew about the resurrection. Those were some of the things they were struggling uh, with here and there. About eating food sacrificed to the idols. Hereafter, you see Paul handling the issue of circumcision immediately after uh, our reading. 
and all those. People were once again uh, putting value in their old traditions because they have realized Christianity is not paying. There isn't anything that I'm getting. Practices were coming back by and by. May the Lord help us in a big way that we not fight ourselves into such situations where we feel we want to go back because this one is not working. This one is not uh, going on. I think it was 2018, I talked to a friend of mine and asked him where he was, and he told me, no, you know, around this time, we go to pray uh, loud Mauti Kenya. Because you know, zile shida tukonazo, ni kwa sababu tumeacha nini? Our traditions and all that. And he told me, sasa unajua mtoto wangu huyu, ako hivi, huyu mwingine ako hivi, huyu mwingine aliorewa, amerudishwa, kwa sababu siku fanya A, B, C, and D, and therefore I have gone now to Mauti Kenya to do A, B, C, and D. I met him four years later na nikamuuliza, mambo sasa ikona mnagani. Now that you went to the, to the mountain, he told me, hey pastor, mambo diyo imeharibika zai, zaidi. Even after going to the, yes, even after going to the mountain, things are turning even worse. And I have heard those testimonies here and there. May God help us to realize that we must not become weary because the word of God is true and what it says, it will take place. Bwana Yesu wa sefewe. The much we may go back to the roots, may God help us to think about ourselves as African Christians or Christian Africans. What does that mean? So that we are not deceived and we don't find ourselves actually doing the wrong thing. The much we are Africans, then how do we practice our faith in the context of our Christianity wherever we are? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says, I'm now a new creation. The old has gone. I'm therefore a new creation. This is who I am doing. May God help us that we not become weary doing good in God's vineyard. That God can help us to continue being generous to everyone wherever we are. That person that you have helped, that person that you have been there for, that you continue the same. That we care for the perishing. That is what verse 1 actually was teaching us. Kindness, love, and even loving the unlovable. Hata ure mutu ambayo unaona sasa huyu uwezi ufanya nini? Kumpenda. Hata huyu ufanya nini? Umpende. That person that you need to forgive, that you be led to forgive. Jesus taught us to forgive how many times? Seventy times, yes, we forgive as much as possible. And in that, we'll be able to carry on. Do not take vengeance. It doesn't belong to you. Vengeance belongs to, to God. Even at your place of work, do not take vengeance. Hard over that one to God. Do not carry the burden of bitterness and forgiveness with your heart. It is you that is going to kill. It is you that is going to give depression. It is you that is going to give us uh, stress wherever we, uh, you are. May God help us. We will not give up even in supporting the church, giving our tithe, giving our offerings, giving our thanksgiving. And thank you for coming. Even the way we have come forward, that regardless of where we are, we are not weary in giving to the Lord. Tell your neighbor, do not be weary in giving to the Lord. There is a story that is recorded on what we call the uh, non-canonical uh, books. These are literatures that were that recorded other happenings that happened during the time of Jesus, but they did not find their way into the Bible. Therefore, they were not canonized. They are not used for public worship, but they are used for reference uh, for Christian teaching. There is this story where Jesus and his disciples were walking for a number of miles, very far. And they got to a place around four, and they had started the journey at seven in the morning. So it is now four. So they have walked for a very long distance. They had not had lunch. And they came to a place where there was a widow, an elderly uh, lady who was also a widow, who was clearing some uh, farm, so that she can be able to plant the vines. Those who have been to Israel know that Israel is a very uh, a rocky place. 
And therefore, for you to plant everything, you have to clear uh, the stones. And so they were there clearing these stones. And Jesus said, let us go and help this lady. Kubeba nini? Kubeba mawe. Nani sangapi? Sakumi. Na wakona ja. So the disciples are there wondering, who does that? Who does? After all this day, we have not even eaten. Now you are telling us to? So they went. Wakisikia tu wamechoka. And they went in there. And of course, there is one who is clever than all the others. Alikuwa na ito nani? Peter. Peter kajua wea Yesu nijui. Tuende tu. So the others picked big stones. Lakini Peter kachukua. Akasema mawe ni nini? Mawe ni mawe. Haku tubabia saiz. Hame tuambia tusaidia kubeba? Mawe. Alipo chukua, wakachukua, yesu wakawambia yes, anatupa pare, let us go. And they walked to where they were supposed to throw the stones. But just before the stones were thrown, Jesus said, stop. Let us say a prayer. For what you are about to take, bless it. On opening their eyes, whatever you are holding was bread. Kwa hivyo fanya nini? Enjoy your lunch. John had the biggest. Kwa hivyo alikuwa na mkata ile inaitwa nini? I have not been home of late. What do you call it in your mother tongue? Yes, that is what he was holding. But Peter alikuwa na nini? Queen cake, hata sio gumu. That is all he had with himself. Okay? So, yeye yeah, aliuma tu mara moja ikafanya nini? Akaanza kudoea ya hawa wengine. But every time he stretch his hand, kuuma ya ware, mahali anashika, hapo ni nini? Ni mai. Therefore he never got anything more than what he was. Wakakura wengine wakashipa and Jesus told them, "Now throw the the stones." And they continued with the journey for another 2 hours. And they came back through the same place. And they found the same woman. But when I did it, And Jesus said, let us continue helping. What do you think Peter did? Yes. And Jesus told them, and they went. And now Peter is wondering, Jesus, please say that prayer quickly. But Jesus said, there is time for everything. Please throw the, the stones. And Peter did not have the opportunity to eat the bread. And they continued with the journey. Tell your neighbor, do not become weary. Even in giving our tithe, our offering, and our thanksgiving. Mwana isu asifewe. Mwambia your neighbor, sadaka siyo sadaka. Mana Peter alisema mawe ni? Mawe ni mawe. You do not know when the Lord will say stop where you are even as you come forward to give your offering. Suppose God said stop when you came with your thanksgiving offering. What would have happened to you? Let us not become weary in all that we are doing. Finally, seek the Lord for strength when you are feeling weary. Isaiah chapter 40 Verse 29 to that one, it reminds us that the Lord gives strength to the weary. When you are feeling weary concerning your children, your husband, your marriage, at your place of work, that you seek the Lord for that strength. The Lord reminds us to take a day at a time. And that is why in Matthew chapter 6, verse 11 and verse 15, Jesus taught us to pray, give us our, our daily bread for today. That which we need, that you can give us our daily bread, and that will be more than enough for us at that particular time. And tomorrow will be taken care of. And above all, let us associate ourselves with Christ. Let us know him. Let him save us. And once we are saved, we'll be able to overcome all the troubles of this world. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.